improving hospitals in Adamawa State. After insurgency attacks, the state governor reaffirms commitment to people's health. At a time when they most need stability, internally displaced children face multiple dangers. What's the psychological impact? Thousands of undocumented immigrants are in limbo following the U.S. Attorney General's announcement to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Africa 54 starts right now. Thank you for tuning into the show that goes around the continent to bring these stories from near and far. I'm Chamberlain Uso at Channels Television here in Lagos, and I'm joined by my colleague at The Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks a lot. I'm Vincent McCorry at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at healthcare reform in Adamawa State. Our host in Lagos brings you that story. Oh yes, the Adamawa State government is seeking improved health care in the state through a speedy reconstruction of infrastructure destroyed during insurgency attacks. The state governor at a handover ceremony of medical equipment for Mubi General Hospital in the state reaffirmed his commitment to people's welfare. Public facilities such as schools and hospitals were among targets of Boko Haram attacks. In Mubi, the second largest commercial town in the Damawa state, medical facilities not only serve indigents and residents, but also IDP returnees from neighboring Cameroon and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Humanitarian aid comes from international donor agencies in the area of health care. The latest being from a non-governmental organization with the provision of medical equipment to the community's health care provider. Mubi General Hospital. The state governor, Mohamed Jibrila, at the presentation of the items, appreciates the intervention, stressing the need for more effort at strengthening health care systems. I want to seize this opportunity to uh, inform my own brothers here, as the nurses and the doctors that are working here, that government is uh, going to do a lot of uh, activities for you. Uh, so that uh, you see also some changes. It's not only bringing the equipment, but to have to train and retrain the nurses and the doctors that are managing this equipment. Present at the ceremony are officials of the General Hospital and traditional leaders, including the Emir of Mubi Emirate. The State Commissioner for Health loads the contributions of NGOs, citing the effect it will have on the health sector. These organizations have helped us a great deal in having to curb outbreaks or pandemics that would have resulted if, not, if there was no health service available. The head of the ICRC in Adamawa State highlights their role in assisting the hospital's operations. We run, uh, we run a coordination unit which receives patients that are referred from primary health care services. We have uh, five uh, primary health care services that uh, we work with. Uh, that is um, Betso, Muva, uh, Lukwa, uh, and uh, Michiga, and Zuro. The state government and health officials say that the donation of emergency ward medical equipment and other items to Mubi General Hospital will better equip the facility to provide everyday health care services to the community and end referrals of emergency cases to the Federal Medical Center in Yola and in Gombe States. Well, that's a good gesture from the non-governmental organization, but health experts will tell you that there's no health without mental health, especially for people displaced by terrorist attacks. And joining us to discuss the psychological impact of displacement and trauma on internally displaced persons, particularly children, is Dr. Emmanuel Babolala. He's a consultant psychiatrist at the Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aru, in Abelkota, Ogun State. Welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. Let's start by letting you uh, tell us about the possible effects that, or mental effects, mental health effects that those who have been exposed to some traumatic events could go through. Traumatic events can have very serious um, adverse consequences on mental health. For example, we can have what we call adverse stress disorders, and then we can have what we call post-traumatic stress disorders. 
in which such individuals will have what we call um, re-experiencing such incidences again, like um, flashbacks, like nightmares, like having vivid memories of such events. Those individuals that have witnessed traumatic events can also have what we call like power arousal, in which they can get irritable. They can find it difficult to sleep, to even concentrate, or have what you call anxiety disorders. And then some others might have what we call avoidance and disorders, in which they don't just want to recall those events again, or they are detached from the society, or they have diminished interest in activity. Apart from these two I've talked about, there are also long-time consequences that can happen when people go through traumatic events. Some later in life can result to substance abuse, Others can have them um, depression or even frank psychosis. Some might find it difficult to adjust to situations. So lots of things can happen when people witness um, traumatic events. Now, in, in cases where children are involved, could, there be, could their reaction be different from those of adults? Well, you know, for children, um, their personality is just beginning to form. And so sometimes adults are a bit more um, able to tolerate the adverse effects of um, this traumatic event because over time they've had um, coping strategies they use in overcoming such traumatic events. And so a lot of these children may suffer from um, learning difficulties in school. Some of them might have what we call destructive behavior, which eventually might grow to be antisocial behavior, and then they might develop various vices as they grow up. And then some of them might also be withdrawn from the society. They might have difficulties forming a past relationship with other people. So for children, the consequences are actually enormous. How can such symptoms be identified among internally displaced children who have witnessed frightening situations, especially for those of them who are still in the IDB camps? We need um, psychiatrists and psychologists to assess such children and then to do what we call psychological first aid. After assessing them, we provide them with first aid and then we provide more detailed treatment and we also use medication if there is need to do so. What sort of treatment would you recommend for such children to avoid negative consequences on their development and social competence? If they suffer from what we call post-traumatic stress disorder, we do what we call a trauma-focused trauma psychological intervention. In short psychological intervention, we might need to provide education, we might need to also help with stress management, and then we might need to help such children to confront their fears about those distressing situations. So for those children, we also assess them to see if they develop their depressive disorders, and we treat with what drugs we call antidepressants. For some of them also, because we do not want to use uh, medication to make them sleep, which eventually they might be dependent on, we might also treat them with antidepressants for a short period of time for them to recover from those symptoms they might be having. So medication has a place in treating such children as well. Dr. Emmanuel Babalola, thank you for joining us today on Africa 54. Thank you very much.